guys today's episode is going to be a bit more different this is going to be episode one ncert english supplementary okay let's start this is lesson number nine what happened to the reptiles okay let's start you may not believe the story but i can tell you it is true because i'm not been to pambu Pati. okay so basically uh he tells a story which is a bit impossible it is hard to believe it is true but it is still true because i have been to pambu Pati, a village on the edge of the jungle he uh, because he it is true because he went to the village there to pambu Pati. it is it is the edge of a cliff a cliff means a mountain the and the vast forest stretches below like a mossy green carpet the vast forest stretches below like a mossy green carpet a mossy green carpet carpet means a green carpet there are many kinds of people in the village dark fair tall short there were many kinds of people in pambupati some were dark some were fair some were tall and some were short they spoke they speak in many languages some eat meat, some don't. Some pray in a small temple at the edge of the forest. Other pray in a, others pray in a mosque some miles away. Some people, some people speak la- many languages. They speak many languages. Some eat meat, some don't. They pray, some pray in a small mosque. Sorry, small temple. Like there's a temple near the cliff. They pray there, and some pray in a mosque miles away. My name is Prem. I live many hundred miles away from Pabupati. I had heard about the village, but I never been there. Last year, last year something terrible happened. To the people of my own village went mad. Okay, so the narrator of this story, Prem, Prem lived. Hundreds of miles away from Pambupati. And then the day, the year before, something th- terrible happened in his own village. People went mad. In uh, People went mad in his village. They started fighting with one another. Some had to run away in the middle of the night. They started fighting with one another. Uh, and they had to run away from the in the middle of the night because uh, they could die there because of the fighting and all okay far far away in a place in a place they have never ever been to a temple or a mosque had been burned down their place far far away a temple or a mosque has been burnt down I he had to he had to wake up at the three of the morning as I lay in my house, half awake to the sounds of hate and violence. There was a fire. Many people many people's houses were burnt down in the fire. One of them was mine. Okay, so he's telling that uh, there was a fire and many people's houses were burnt down. He grabbed a few clothes and some coins and his little Ganesh statue and ran for the day and the night resting when, whenever his legs would not carry him any further I jumped he jumped onto a train then on a bus no tickets never mind he didn't he did not have tickets so basically he never minded seemed to be running finally he found himself in Pambu Pati the village he was talking about and the villagers gathered near a well. I ra- he ran to them. And before he could say a thing, he fainted. When he opened his eyes, he saw a man with a black, white beard and shining black eyes bending over me. He looked after him for a few days. Uh, he putting food in my mouth and brings me sweet cold water from the stream. He rubbed my his feet gently and made the pain go away neighbors strangers everyone came to visit him tell me grandfather i said to him one day i have never seen people 
like the villagers. In my village, people fight with those who pray to another god. But here, this seems to be a very strange place. The old man replied, I will tell you the story of Pambupati. Maybe he would take the story back to his village. And it will heal some of its wounds and dry some of its sores. Oh, grandfather, I said anxiously. Don't say that what I have seen in my village makes him burn with shame. In his village, people killed each other. So basically, that makes him burn with shame. But that is exactly why you must go back, he said. He said. In a soft voice, I kept quiet. I did not want to argue with him. And I want to, wanted to hear his story. Okay, so the grandfather told, told Prem a story. Okay, let's listen to the story, what it is. It, it happened a long time ago. Long, long time ago, he began. So long ago that there were no schools and no teachers. Children lived in caves with their parents and helped them to collect fruit fruit and berries from the forest. At that time at that time there were no tigers or panthers or elephants in the Pampapati forest. Okay, so a long time ago there were no panthers, elephants or tigers in the village, in Pampapati village. They are only reptiles. You know what reptiles are? Uh, they lay eggs and they and they have scales on their bodies. Okay, now you know what reptiles are: snakes, crocodiles, turtles, lizards, and you. And you that a, and you know that a reptile has scales on its body and lays eggs. Every month, the reptiles of Pampapati had a big meeting. Every single month, the reptiles of Pampapati had a meeting. Let's see what that meeting was. The pretty excited snakes. The snakes were excited and pretty. The slow, thoughtful tortoises. The tortoises were slow and thoughtful. The clever, quick. The lizards were clever and quick. And the moody crocodiles, grumpy because they were out of water. Moody means uh, emotionless. The president of meetings was Makara, the biggest crocodile of the forest. Actually, he was the strongest and the biggest crocodile of the forest. All the animals thought he was very important. When some one strong is powerful, you know it is difficult not to go along what, what, with what he says or does. Now, one day a strange thing happened. It was a week before one of the monthly meetings. Makara sent a letter letter to the tortoises tortoises asking them not to come to the meeting the big old star tortoise with black and yellow pictures on its shell was very angry so basically makara sent a letter to the tortoises to telling that uh, he they they should not come for the meeting and the big old star star tortoise ahiste was very angry what does this mean? He shouted. How dare they? But not one of the tortoises had the courage to attend the meeting. There were so few. The others were so many. Before the meeting, the giant Makara polished his teeth. Giant Makara polished his teeth with the red flowers of the tree. And by the river, they sparkled. And he told, Brothers and sisters, he began, all the... Reptiles, even the beautiful King Cobra, stopped, st stopped talking. Makara continued his speech. I decided that we don't need the tortoises. I have told them not to come today. Brothers and sisters, can you, can you tell me why we don't like the tortoises? The reptiles looked this way and that. They felt very uncomfortable. The snakes hissed anxiously. The lizards wriggled their tails. The crocodiles opened their jaws even wider. But, said one lizard, No buts! shouted Makara. There was silence. No thinks! said Makara. So loudly that the fruit 
on the tree above him rained down. After that, no one had the courage to speak. Makara cleared his throat and showed a few more teeth. Well, he said, I will tell you why we don't like the tortoises. They are very slow. So stupid. They even carry their houses on their backs, their shells. Who who has heard of such a stupid things? Now you lizards, you live on trees. Would you expect yourself to carry a tree on your back? Would you? But they answered no. No buts. Now listen, I have told the tortoises that they will have to, no to uh, have to move out of Pambupati. When they go, we will have more of everything, more food, more water, and more space. I want them out by tomorrow, but they are such slow co- coaches that slow coaches that he ordered them to. He gave him them one week time, and by next Tuesday we won't have a single tortoise left in this jungle. And by the following Tuesday, the they were all gone. All animals felt sad, but they realized what Makara had said was true. There was more food, more water, and more space for them. But a strange smell began to, uh, to fill the forest. It was the smell of rot, rotting fruit on the ground. Rotting animals in the river. This is what tortoises have used to eat. Even Makara used to go about, his holding his nose with his big claws. A m- month passed by, and then the same thing happened all over. But this time, it was with the snakes. Ma- Makara wrote them one of his letters. They they were ordered to leave leave the forest. Since they could move fast, they had only one day to leave the forest. Naga, the head of the snakes, pleaded for more time, but the Makara would would not give in. At the meeting, he silenced the others. The lizards, the crocodiles, with even bigger shouts and threats. Snakes are slimy, he said, and they make funny noises. Who wants such weird creatures around? Again, no one dare to disagree with Makara. And so the snakes left. For a while, the animals of the forest were happy because they uh, they had been a little afraid of the snakes. Little afraid of the snakes. You never know when one of them might lose temper and... One of my, them might lose his temper and spit some venom at you. And it took only a little poison to kill you after all. A few weeks passed and the animals of the forest looked tired and fed up. The rats! Now that there were no snakes to, to eat them, the rats has taken, have taken over the forest. And they were... Having a wonderful time, they were everywhere, on the ground, on the trees, in the grass, in the bushes, on the ground. They ate up the eggs of the lizards and crocodiles. There would be no babies that year. Makara's own nest of eggs have been chewed up. Then Makara had a great idea. He he called a meeting of the crocodiles and the crocodiles and said, Wouldn't it be wonderful if... Wonderful if we have the whole jungle for ourselves. No one but us. The lizards looked at each other. They have the strangest habit. Some of them even change color. How can we trust someone who is red one time and green the other? The, the next? Let's get rid of them. By now, the crocodiles were really scared of Makara, so they clapped and cheered. Makara was pleased. The lizards left the forest with their babies on their backs. But now, when the life should have been wonderful for the crocodiles of Pambupati, all kinds of awful things began to happen. The rats grew bolder by the day, day by day, and became so fearless that they jumped. 
jumped and turned somersaults somersaults means uh, rolling around rolling around somersaults on the ground on the crocodile's backs and there were too many frogs they seemed to be growling sorry growling growing larger and there was no one to eat them but the crocodiles these huge frogs began to eat the baby crocodiles and the insects now the lizards were gone there are millions of them growing bigger and nastier day by day it was a terrible time for the crocodiles they couldn't understand what happened to their happy forest home then one day a squeaky little voice piped up at one of their meetings we know why the forest has gone crazy don't we Suddenly, everyone was silent. They looked at Makara fearfully. But to their surprise, he looked nervous. He shook a rat off his tail and asked a small crocodile, Why, little fellow? It all began to trot. Okay, okay, said Makara. There's no need to talk so much. Makara didn't want to admit that he was wrong, but it didn't, didn't matter. All the crocodiles knew not that he was not at all. all that strong or powerful are always right they send urgent messages to all over the place for the tortoises snakes and lizards to come back to pambu patti and what a great day it was when these creatures came back family after family with little parents on their backs and and straggling shouting at their parents to wait for them okay. in two in two months The forest was back to normal. The rats disappeared, and the insects, and the smell, and the w- world finally went back to its, to its fa- familiar old self. Phil, dream. Said the old man, "Have you fallen asleep? Did my story send you to dreamland?" No, I shook my he- his head. No, grandfather. I was just thinking. Maybe it's time I went back to my own village. I have a story to tell them but what if they don't listen to me the old man replied we can only keep at it my son tell these stories again and again to more and more people maybe some of them laugh at you or say your stories are not true but they may remember one day and understand that each of us has a place in a strange funny world of finn arts okay guys so basically the story is about what happened to the reptiles and the more of the story is un- unity in numbers i think yeah zai witaker the poet the writer of this po- lesson is zai witaker so basically this is an awesome lesson yeah okay guys see you in the next episode and as always peace out like share subscribe bye